All right, so today I'm joined by UFC middleweight, Andre Petroski. How are you doing, Andre? Doing well, brother. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, man. Thanks for coming on. Um, so let's just get right into it. Congrats on your win. That's five in a row over Gerald Mearshart. Uh, how are you feeling coming off of that? Good. I mean, it was definitely a hard-fought win. Uh, there was a, faced a little bit of adversity in the fight, but overall, happy to get out of there with the victory. Yeah, I mean, I even had that written down as far as a hard-fought win. Uh, that's like your last fight, too. But why was it a hard-fought win in there, if you could just tell me from your perspective? Just wasn't an early finish. You know, went the distance, um, lost the third round. So, um, got poked in the eye in the first. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just had to fight through some adversity. Did they catch that? Because I was watching, but I might have forgot if that if they caught that or not. So they did. They they showed the highlight. It's like his pinky. Oh. Caught me. Did yeah. the ref stop the fight though? Yeah, he did. Okay, gotcha. Um, so you had a little bit of adversity, but you also dropped him in the second round, right? So, um, overall, are you proud of that performance, or what are your thoughts on like the whole thing in hindsight? Yeah, I mean, looking back, I definitely could have done some things differently. And, um, but overall, like, um, I followed the game plan pretty well. And, um, obviously I got the victory, so that's, what's most important. Yeah. And I'm, um, what was that? And I'm healthy. Yeah. And you're healthy. Right. Um, and that's kind of why you've been out for around like 10 months, right? Is because you had to withdraw from your last fight because you suffered like a shoulder injury or something like that. Correct. I had a torn rotator cuff. Yeah, and, dude, that's pretty brutal. How have you been able to kind of overcome that? Uh, Yeah, I mean, the UFC helped me out a lot. They sent me stem cells, and I uh, did, like, six weeks of rehab, a lot of PT, and um, it did get better. Okay, and as far as, like, the fight went, it was able to hold up in there? You don't feel any, like, tenderness right now or anything? Yeah, no issues, no. Okay, gotcha. Um, And as far as that then, like, are you looking to get right back in there, maybe, like, December or something like that? Yeah, I would love to fight in November. Um, oh, November. I love fighting on the East Coast, so uh, MSG would be perfect. Okay, gotcha. And I just want to go back to one other question I had as far as the fight goes. Um, where were you at mentally kind of going into that? Because a few things, I remember you were you kind of wanted Gerald, right? So you, that's like an opponent you wanted, but you were overcoming an injury, a little bit of time off. Were you confident, excited going into it, or were you battling any demons or anything like that in hindsight? Yeah, I think that originally, like, I really loved the matchup just because he has the most submissions in the history of the division. So, you know, I'm trying to make the argument that I'm the best grappler in the middleweight division. So that definitely helped my argument. And then and then I would kind of didn't want to fight him anymore after my teammate beat him. Joe Pfeiffer. And I was like, yeah, and I was like, eh, I don't want, like, I was kind of looking at it like almost like, you know, it was he was already beat. It was almost roadkill. But then once I got past that, I was like, well, you know, at the end of the day, like, he still has the most submissions in the history of division. It's a great matchup for me. And uh, it's good experience. And he's ranked above me. So it's only going to uh, bring my ranking up. So there was there were so many positives from it. Um, it was just such a great matchup for me. Okay, so there wasn't really as much pressure as, like, you were looking at it as a um, good opportunity for you. Correct. Okay, awesome. And as far as your next opponent goes, I mean, you're saying November. Do you know – is that, like, ideal for, like, a Bo Nickel matchup, or do you have your eyes set on, like, another opponent? <clears throat> yeah, I would love the Bo Nickel fight, obviously. Um, I've been calling for him a lot. Um, but really, anybody in the top 20. Okay. Uh, I want to start moving up these rankings. I think Mirshar was 19th, so um, I should be pretty close to that after this fight. And I just want to continue to get closer to the title, you know, at, at 5-0. and um, At some point, we have to talk about how many more fights I got to win before I can get a title shot. Right. Um, and that's what I was kind of thinking, too, because I guess the way you are, uh, you say you like to fight often, but maybe sometimes if you want to get that matchup you want, you got to sit out a little bit. What do you are you weighing that at all? Have you have you considered that? Yeah. Um obviously I like to fight, but um 
and I don't really want to fight. Just anybody, right? I don't right, really want to fight down too much now yeah. at this point, you know? I've, I'm 5-0, and oh, and I want to continue to climb the rankings. Gotcha. So I guess that's something to consider if they give you, like, a matchup further out, you'd be willing to take that too? If it's, like, yeah, a good name? Sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and last thing as far as, like, opponents and stuff, uh, would you be willing to give any of those guys you beat in grappling, like, a rematch or something like that? Because they're kind of veterans in the division too, right? Actually, shit, they're both 170 pounders, I think. Who are we talking about? Phil, uh, Phil Rowe, and then Eric Anders. Anders, the eighty-five pounder, and so is I. Never fought Phil Rowe. I fought Phil Halls, who's also oh. an eighty-five pounder. There you go. Um, Anders, it, it trains with our team, so he comes oh. up and trains with us. So that's probably never going to happen. And uh, Halls, I, like I said, like he's he's really down in the rankings right now. Um, I don't think he's in the top 30, so I don't think that that matchup makes much sense, to be honest. Right. I was thinking um, Phil Rowe, and I I know he's ranked at 170, so I was thinking that might have been one, but that, that's my bad. Um, as far as the gyms go, I just got to ask, you're still you're not with Daniel Gracie's gym anymore? Is, is everything okay with them? No, he left. He, he moved to Vegas. Oh, I see. So nothing really happened there. He just He just kind of left. Is it the same team that you're with then? You guys all left and went to another gym or like Sean Brady and so, all those guys are still with you? Yeah. So um, my coaches are John Marquez, Eddie Torres, and Jonathan Webb. And Jonathan and Eddie um, both have their black belts under Daniel. So they own their own gyms and we mix up our training between the three gyms. Okay. Gotcha. That sounds good. Yeah. I was worried that like something might have like there was some beef or something like that, but I guess he just went to Vegas. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's some people that feel a certain type of way about him leaving. Um, but yeah, that's it. You know, he okay. left. He, probably, he had a pretty good team here, and and he did leave. Yeah, I know. Uh, how are how's everything though? You guys have been able to resituate and all that because it seemed like there was something brewing at the Daniel Gracie, or at least he was getting a lot of the credit for it. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. don't be mistaken. Our team is certainly even more on the rise now than we ever were. We got six guys in the UFC. We have the best re – our team has the best record of any team uh, in the UFC right now. Yeah, I mean, you almost undefeated, right? Who's maybe like one loss or something? We have two losses uh, – or sorry, we have three losses. Sean Brady lost to Bilal Muhammad, Pat Sabatini – uh, lost to Damon Jackson and Jeremiah just lost to uh, um, what was that kid's name? I think it was like two weeks ago. Yeah. But so besides that, we're like I think we're like twenty three or twenty four and three. Okay. Yeah, that's a crazy Between fucking the six record. Of us. Yeah. You got any guys who are about to get signed or anything? We have a bunch of. I, I'm not sure who's going to get signed, but we have a bunch of studs up and coming. Um. We got this 70-pounder named Igor from Ukraine. He's 4-0. Uh, he's a beast. Uh, Manny Morales, he's at 170 also. Um, then we just got a bunch of just studs coming up. You know, some are some of them are still amateurs. Um, some are about to turn pro. But, yeah, and then we, we get a bunch of guys from um, Eastern European countries, Uzbekistan, Georgia, um, Russia. That's where Nurse Laton, uh, he just fought that Bruno Ferreira. Yeah. He's with us. Uh, okay. He's from Uzbekistan. How'd you get all those guys over there? How'd they hear about you? It's crazy, man. Everyone's coming to Philly to pursue MMA. Like, we, we just have such a crop of killers right now that everyone's coming to Marquez to train, and, and uh, they know the best work is here in Philly. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I'll be excited to see what you got, some new tools you got in your next fight then. Um, just to kind of, like – wrap it up here because we only got like 10 minutes left i did want to ask you about what the hell happened after your fight you ran into some guy like straight jerking it in like a gas station can you just tell me what happened yeah so we were on our way back from uh boston probably about two hours away from philadelphia and uh i was with billy janzer and my coach eddie and uh billy goes into the one goes to the bathroom in the one urinal and the guy next to him is just like staring at him and he looks over 
And obviously he was doing what he was doing. So we walk, I walk out. He's like, dude, did you see that? And he said, I was like, what do you mean? So we go back in and at this point he runs from the urinal to the stall and he's mm -hmm. hiding in the stall. So I'm like, all right, we'll just wait for him to come out. And uh, in the meantime, grab the manager. The manager goes in and sees the same thing. So he's like, all right, well, I'm going to call the police. And, What's he doing, uh, jerking dude, off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. In the bathroom while he was watching people go, he would, you know, walk up to the, to the urinals next to uh, the guys. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. And so you called the manager and shit like that? Yeah, so then uh, he like, wasn't coming out of the bathroom. So we eventually went in and got him and brought him out. And uh, he was like, just let me leave, let me leave. But no, we, we sat outside with him until the cops got there. Okay, so did you have to, like, pin him down or something like that? Because that's what I saw. Yeah, I read somewhere. He didn't run or nothing. What was that? He did He did not try to run or anything. Okay. Was he, like, drugged out? He must have been, like, kind of, like, not all there, right? I, honestly, nah, I think he's just sick. Like, really? I, I don't think it, he seems, like, coherent. Yeah. Wow. Did Did the cops get to, like, arrest him or anything? Or did he Yeah, they did, away? and they did charge him. Oh, they did? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to know then. Yeah. Is there like a like a kids jujitsu class going on behind behind you or something? Because I feel like <laughs> this is not a good conversation to have right now or something. Yeah. Luckily, they're all in class for the okay. most part. But um, yeah, my daughter's actually in the class. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting that vibe. So we can move on past this. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Just the last thing I wanted to ask you, and maybe if I could just ask a couple follow-ups after it. But the main thing I want to ask you is, you had shared something about like overcoming addiction and stuff like that. And without really any questions, I just want to like, maybe if you could just share what like your message is to people, because I feel like you want to share like um, a message to like people who, who might be struggling or something. So what is that? Yeah, I just think it's that um, you can, you can overcome uh, whatever difficulties you are going through. There is help out there. Um I think that for like a long time, I really didn't know where to go for help. And I think that um, if more people knew of the resources out there, like, you know, a lot more people wouldn't wouldn't be struggling as much as they are. OK, um, as far as like how you were able to overcome it, was it like cold turkey or did you just finally find a place that was able to help you or something? Yeah, no, I I, I went to a facility, a treatment facility in 2018 and that was really what led me um the help to get the help i needed okay and uh I, you it might be a figure of speech that you say but i'm I'm just curious were you in jail for it at some point in time or is, were you saying you're you were in jail in your mind <clears throat> yeah let me walk out of here for a second sorry <laughs> my bad bro <laughs> yeah so i I was, I overdosed in 2018 uh -huh. and when I came to, and when they, then they gave me uh like a drug bond, which basically said that you could either go to jail or we can take you to a treatment facility. And obviously I opted to go to the treatment facility. Right. Which ended up saving my life. Okay. And just that first part cut out. You said that you overdosed, you woke up and the cops found you or something like that. So when I was with, um, uh, I was with this kid and he called the paramedics mm. and when the paramedics came, um, I like came to at some point and I like started freaking out. And so I tried to actually tried to run from the scene and that was when they tackled me and like, I don't know. I had like, it was a whole, a whole situation that I'm not proud of. Gotcha. But overall they offered you, they gave you two options, go to jail or rehab. You chose rehab and that was it for Correct. you, right? Okay. Yeah. And yeah, that was uh May 2nd of 2018. Okay. Wow. And was that like, so you had been kind of dealing with this throughout college and stuff like that too, which might be something that other people deal with too right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, re Really from like, the age of like 15, 16, um, 
I just never like, I was lucky enough that, um, there was periods where I was like, I would get, get out of the area. You know, I went away for college for a while and, uh, where, which kind of like delayed my progression of my addiction. I see. Uh, the kind of like sports was able to get you off it for like a month or two at a time. But then when you come back home, the off season. Well, really like nine to 10 months. When I was at UNC, we were away 10 months out of the year. Mm. But then when you come home for summer, like three months was when was enough. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for sharing that, man. I think that there's a lot of people who probably struggle with that in college. I have heard that another fighter, Brennan, um, I think Brennan Ward from, from Bellator, same kind of yeah. story. He was in college and kind of struggling with it, but uh, would not be using for a while and then be back on and stuff. So I think, how did, how did it start for you? Was there like an injury or something like that? Or is it the area you're from? So when I was growing up, I had this neighbor. Um, he was in my grade. He graduated with me, but his mom, she was like all, whatever. She struggled and uh, she would give us Oxy-80s all the time. And uh, it's actually crazy. She actually ended up falling in the bathroom and hit her head and died. Wow. And that was kind of the end of that. But that was my first introduction to opiates specifically. And I was in love ever since. Mm, I see. And if you're not careful, like you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Those are heavily addictive because you can't get off it after like taking it for like a week or so. Right. A couple weeks. Yeah. Just the word like the worst when I yeah. see like when if I have young teammates or kids that are like, you know, they like to party. I'm not going to tell a kid not to party, but I'm like, dude, whatever you do, just avoid opiates at all costs. Avoid the painkillers. Like, it's just the most addictive thing in the world. Yeah, no, I hear you. Stick. I guess if you're going to do something right, stick to some weed or something like that. It's probably the best. Right, yeah. right. Um, if you could just answer two quick things, I'll, I'll let you go. Um, thoughts on Sugar Sean O'Malley? And then another guy's been making big headlines. What are your thoughts on fucking Dylan Dennis and all his wild shit? Dude, I, I don't see, like, bro, who is Dylan Dennis? Yeah. No, yeah, I'm like, curious I'm about serious. your thoughts. Yeah. I've never seen – I've seen him fight one time. Like, I don't know. I guess for you guys, it's like – I don't know what that does. If that gets you, like – if you write an article on Dylan Dennis, do you get, like, more, like, clicks or something? Well, I mean, straight up, I think just that he's, like, calling out Logan's girl, that's, like, what's getting all the clicks right now. I think like yeah, I don't know. I, like, other than that, can not really. Anyone do that? Like what? I don't understand where he gets any, like, the dude. I literally saw the guy fight one time. I've never seen him fight. I've never even seen him compete in jujitsu. Like I know he's a Marcelo Garcia guy, but I've never seen him do anything. I don't know. I don't get it. Like, yeah, he used to compete. I think like before he trained Connor, and he he got up to like Gary Tone in matches. I think I saw him uh battle like uh what's his name gordon once or twice but he didn't win those championships but that that's like about as much as he's done yeah yeah he yeah, like I, got I, to those matches which is decent but doesn't it just doesn't interest me to be honest okay fair enough i won't yeah. bother you with that anymore uh but thoughts on sugar sean winning the title is that kind of cool? very though? impressive yeah honestly super impressive his demeanor all week just like unfazed man he's hard to rattle like Obviously, he has, like, a supreme confidence the way he carries himself. And just to be able to go out and execute, um, I think he was, like, plus 250. Yeah. You know, it's just, like, he's the perfect guy, man. Like, like the underdog, he's, like, he just, you know, you can't, like, he don't believe that shit. Like, if you told him, like, hey, you're a plus 250 underdog, he's, like, what do you mean? I'm Sugar Sean O'Malley. Like, yeah. he, does, he doesn't buy into that shit. So it's like, he's the perfect guy to, like, pull off those types of upsets. Yeah, uh, you touched on his self-belief. That, does that give you motivation to just, like, believe in yourself that much more? Seeing, like, a kid like that, like, self-belief takes you a long way when you add the work ethic to it, right? Absolutely. It's inspiring, yeah. for sure. Right. All right, Andre. Well, I don't want to take any more of your time. I appreciate you coming on, man. And uh, I'll be looking out for your next fight announcement. And thanks for sharing your story with me. Thanks, brother.